Welcome to Power Ops Desktop. Imagine this, you are handed over a Power BI report created six months ago by a colleague who since moved to a different team. You need to troubleshoot an issue or update the report, but there's no documentation, just layers of data models, measures, and visuals. Sounds familiar, right? Let's face it, while creating stunning dashboards and insightful reports is exciting, documenting them, not so much but without documentation, you are left guessing. What data source were used? What transformations were applied in Power Query? And why is this tax formula so complicated? This is where Power Ops saves the day. With a click, the documentation feature generates a comprehensive report that tells you everything you need to know. Data sources and connections, key transformation and measures, even details about custom visuals or calculated fields. In our scenario, instead of hours spent reverse engineering the report, you now have a ready-made guide to understand and update the report seamlessly. It's like having a blueprint for your Power BI report. Let's jump into Power Ops and go through the process of creating the documentation. So let's get started. Let's add the Power BI file that I have. I'm gonna select the file type as report, file format as PBIX, and then click on browse here and choose the report that I have and then click on add. Once the file is open in Power Ops Desktop, you will see the summary tab, which was giving you all the details related to the pages, the number of visuals in the report, visual types, filters, etc. There are detailed videos available on our YouTube channel about each and every feature the Power Ops Desktop offers. But in this video, let's talk about the documentation feature. And you will see that we have a new icon in here, says documentation. Let's click on this documentation feature. And here you get an option to choose the objects that you want to export. At the top, we have the summary information, summary related to the report, summary related to the semantic model. You get an option here to check this box, whether you want the summary only for the report or your model as well. And then we have the report section, which will basically give you details or insights into the pages, your visuals, the custom visuals, actions, bookmarks, navigators, sync slicers. The next section is the semantic model. Under semantic model, we have tables, columns, hierarchies, parameters, the relationships, data groups, etc. All of that information related to your semantic model is available in here. And you get to choose what is it that you want to include in your documentation. For example, let's say your Power BI report does not have a refresh policy. You can simply uncheck this and then just export only those items that you want to document. Now let's head to the next section here, which is DAX. Under DAX, we have measures, we have calculated columns, we have KPIs, calculation groups, calculated tables, DAX query view, and visual calculations as well. The next section here is the dependencies section. The model dependencies, the report dependencies, the Power Query dependencies, all of these dependencies are also documented in detail. The next section is the M queries. The steps that you apply in mQuery, all of that is documented as well. We also have a section here to document the row level security and the object level security. And then the last section here is information. Once you've checked all the items here that you want to document, all you have to do is click on this generate button here and give it a couple of minutes based on the report size. This is going to create the documentation for you. Now our document is ready. Let's give it a file name. I'm going to call this as FTE report and then let's give it a document title as well. Let me call this as document FTE report. And then you get an option here to choose whether you want a PDF file or a Word file. I'm going to choose PDF here and click on download. And now our documentation is ready. Let's open the file here. And now the documentation has been created and you can see that we have 35 pages of detailed documentation of our Power BI report. This is the most detailed documentation that you can create of your Power BI report with just the click of a button. Now let's take a look at the documentation itself. The first page here has table of content and you can see that all of this is hyperlinked. For example, if you want to jump to the visual section, you can simply click on visual and now you're here in the visual section. Let's quickly scroll up. And on the table of contents, we have all of the details that we previously looked at, the summary section, the report section. And when I scroll down here, I have the semantic model, I have DAG. So all of the sections here are clearly defined. Now let's go through these sections briefly. The first section that you have here is your report summary, basically telling you the number of pages that you have in your report, that number of visuals, etc. that we looked at earlier as well. We have the objects by page, you have your semantic model summary here, the number of tables, columns, measures, data sources, etc. 
This document is just not filled with text. You can see that there are visuals in here as well, which will help you understand your report easily. Let's quickly scroll down here. And now this is the report section, which is giving you details about your pages, including the minute details like the canvas background color that has been used, the input box color. There are hex code provided in here. And here I have a section which is giving me details about my visuals. I in my data tab, I have a matrix visual and these are all the fields that are used in that particular matrix. These are the different details available for various visuals that I have in my report and visual interactions. The documentation also provides insights into any of the custom visuals that have been used in the Power BI report. As you can see, I have used a date picker here by PowerVis and this has automatically generated a little insight or summary of that particular visual. And here I have all the details related to the filters that I have used in my Power BI visuals. I have details about page filter, report filter, drill through filter, etc. And then we have the bookmark section giving you details about your bookmarks and different properties of that particular bookmark. You have your sync slicer here, page navigator. Coming to the semantic model, we have three different tables in this particular report. We have the storage mode, type, columns, hierarchies, measures, etc. And then in the FTE trend table, and here we have the details about the columns. We have the column name, the data type, format, data category, etc. We also have a data source section giving you clear insights into where exactly the data is coming from. We have the relationships in here, which is clearly again defining you that there's a relationship between FTE trend and CC mapping table, which is many to one relationship, giving you all of the details related to relationship right here in this documentation. You have this graphical view of the model and the relationships as well. The next section here is DAX and you can see that clearly all the expression that you have used within a particular measure is being defined in here. You can see that these are the different measures that are available in the Power BI report, the calculated columns, the calculated tables, what is the expression used to create those calculated tables. All of that is very clearly documented in this report. We have details about the calculation groups, the KPIs, the tax query views, the dependencies, etc. You have the graphical view of the model dependencies as well. As you can see here, for example, I have the year field. That particular field is dependent on the date field here. Likewise, I have period. It is giving you the details about the dependencies as well. And the next section here is M queries. If you have transformed your data in Power Query Editor, all of your steps will be clearly documented in this section. We then have details about your row level security, the object level security, etc. And the last section that we have here is the info section. We have the file name, the model compatibility level, the Power BI version, what is the connection mode that is used here, the theme that is applied, the Power BI data source, the language that is used. And this is the additional information available here towards the end of the report. And there you have it. Power Ops documentation feature in action. It takes the pain out of documenting your Power BI reports, saving you time and effort while improving collaboration and consistency across your team. Remember, while creating stunning dashboards and insightful reports is exciting, documentation is what keeps your hard work sustainable and easy to maintain. Now imagine if you had to create this 35 pages of clear documentation of your Power BI report, what is the amount of time and effort that you have to put in to create something like this? Let me know in the comments, how do you handle documentation in your Power BI projects? And are you ready to give PowerOps a try? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.